So when it comes to motherboards, there's certain ones out on the market that really, really excite me. It gives you that nice balance of kind of getting performance, features, and for a very good price. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Enter the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. So the X570 Aorus Master. Now, you may remember I actually did a video on the Z390 Aorus Master and I absolutely loved it. I kind of dubbed it as one of probably the best motherboard on Z390. So I'm expecting good things from the X570. So firstly, looking at the box, we don't actually get kind of a view of the board itself, anything like that, but we get that all important AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. So it is ready for the new third generation processors. Also, we do get some new features with X570. So we've got PCIe 4.0, uh, Wi-Fi 6 ready as well. Um, so yeah, there is some extra kind of USB stuff and I'm not actually sure how much I can talk about because obviously I am under NDA when it comes to the AMD side of things. Now looking at the back, we can get kind of our first glimpse of what the board looks like. Typical kind of fashion that we'd expect from an Aorus Master motherboard. Lots of nice lighting on there, lots of features. And they kind of go through some of the main features here, including the advanced thermal design, um, full PCI Express 4.0 design, next generation 2.5 uh, GBE LAN, Wi-Fi 6, and a few of the main specs. So let's get it unboxed and see what it's all about. So when you unbox it, obviously we have the board itself. I'm just going to put that to one side just so we can have a quick gander at the accessories. So in here we get a, uh, I've seen this with many, many boards from Gigabyte before, sort of loads of little stickers, including things to label up your cables, sort of passport, not even sure what that's about, but loads of little stickers. You can put it on your door, you can put it on your computer case, whatever you want to do. Multilingual installation guide. We get the typical user manual, uh, which probably comes in various different languages. We get a case badge sticker for anyone who actually kind of still uses these. I don't know anyone who really uses case badge stickers, but yeah, you do get that included and a driver CD. Uh, then underneath, which is where we find all the good stuff is, let's have a look. So we have cables for the addressable RGB. We have another cable here, which looks like it's for, yep, the standard RGB, so our four pin. We get, what looks like, let's have a little look at the header and the connector. Looks like a little microphone or a little speaker. I'm guessing a little microphone. So maybe this is related to the X570 chipset fan. That's something we can look at when obviously we do our full review, which we will have a full review of this board uh, on launch, which is July the 7th. Two SATA cables, one of them being right angled. Another two SATA cables, one of them again being right angled. Uh, what other accessories have we got? So we've got the famous kind of uh, G connector, which is really handy for when you're doing your uh, front panel headers from your chassis. We get our, is that a temperature probe by the looks of it? Let's have a look. Yep, so temperature probe, so you know you can plug this into the board and control uh, and sort of view the temperature from anywhere inside your system. We've got another one there as well. Nothing else that side. Got a few other little bits this side. So obviously it has got Wi-Fi. So included is a Wi-Fi antenna uh, with, I'm guessing the two connectors on there. We get some Aorus branded cable ties as well, which are just nice to have basically. And then inside here, you can see that we have the various different M.2 screws and um, sort of mounting bits. So there's three of the kind of mounts and then three of the screws. So let's get all this sort of back in and we can actually have a look at the motherboard itself. So we'll be back with this out. So the board itself and the main reason why you're actually here. So to start with, ATX form factor, nothing out of the ordinary there. Kind of typical color scheme that we've seen on the Aorus Master boards before. So primarily you've got a black PCB, lots of sort of black accented areas, but with some nice kind of premium touches with kind of the brushed aluminum in a few areas. Uh, there will be some lighting on here as well. So I'll plug that in and we, we'll get some of the, the lighting so you can sort of see what's going on with that. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the CPU socket. So to start with AM4 uh, socket, so it does support second gen and third gen. Obviously to get the most out of the X570 chipset, you are gonna wanna put one of the new um, third generation processors in there to really harness the full potential. Obviously power delivery on this, we're looking at two eight pin power connectors up here, providing lots of clean, stable power. Now in terms of the phases, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 plus two or no, uh, no, we've got the capacity. Okay, so we're looking at a 14 phase design by the looks of things. So basically, 
I don't think there's any any motherboards out there from Gigabyte, even with the Extreme. I think that's still a 14 phase. There may be some doublers on there, who knows, but that's something we're definitely looking into and sort of, you know, look at when we do the full review on these boards because that's going to mean a lot when it comes to the power that's being delivered to the CPU socket and therefore the kind of extra power that you can get when you're doing things like overclocking. Now, talking about overclocking, obviously, uh, there is actually another phase up there. So, yeah, I'm going to have to check it, but I think it's 14 phases in total. Um, so, speaking of overclocking, obviously, there are a few functionless board on this board for overclockers so to start with you can see all of the voltage readout points just up here so this is where you can measure your soc voltage your vdim um, and various other things uh, which is really really handy when the camera focuses really really handy because um, sometimes software can sort of you know give you some false readouts so it's nice to be able to sort of hook up to this now in terms of other overclocking features yes we have our power button here we also have our reset button and we have two switches here for the bios now looking at it one of them is actually um, to enable the dual bios um, so I'm just having a little sort of closer look there so you have single bios and you can disable or enable it and then you have a BIOS switch where you can actually switch between the two BIOS um, BIOSes, BIOS size, whatever it's called. So basically you can switch the BIOSes as well as have two BIOSes on at the same time. And then we've got a debug LED as well. Typical 24 pin down here. Other kind of connectors and stuff up here is we've got a CPU optional um, just here. We also have a CPU fan just here. We've got an addressable RGB header as well as a kind of conventional RGB header just over here as well. Dim slots, obviously there are four. It's gonna be supporting crazy fast speeds due to the new memory controller that we've kind of heard about on the new AMD Ryzen third generation processors. So we're probably expecting it will support speeds up to, I don't know, about 4,500 megahertz somewhere, but obviously you can overclock beyond that as well. Moving sort of further down the board, you can see that we've got a couple of other uh, fan headers here. So lots of system fan headers and pump headers just sort of situated on the side. Uh, USB Type-C connector just here as well. And then as we come down here, you can see that we have six SATA ports. Uh, obviously, they're all SATA 6 and they uh, most likely do support RAID 0, 1 and 10. Uh, moving sort of further down the board, you can see we've got our front panel headers. Uh, we've got USB 3.1, uh, although I think it's actually listed as 3.0, but I can't see why that would be 3.0 in the branding, more likely USB 3.1. We've got another system fan header down here, your legacy kind of USB 2.0, and then some more um, RGB headers as well. So we've got our conventional four pin, as well as the three pin addressable and your front panel audio. Now, uh, in terms of audio, yes, we do have this panel here as well with the ESS uh, Sabre Hi-Fi uh, on there as well. You can see all of the capacitors. It is kind of uh, shielded off from the rest of the motherboard. As we know, a lot of motherboard manufacturers as of late have kind of been putting in a lot of effort into the audio side of things. So we have got that. PCI Express wise, there are three X16 slots on here and a single X1 slot. I'm not actually sure why there's not another X1 slot here. Compared to sort of other boards that I've seen from other brands, I kind of would have expected a little bit more functionality there maybe. So X16, so the top one's obviously gonna run at X16. The bottom one is X8 and then the, uh, sorry, the middle one is X8 and then the bottom one is X4. So obviously if you are doing Crossfire or SLI and you're using these two, they will be running at X8, X8. There is also scattered sort of in between this, uh, you can see our three uh, NVMe uh, slots as well. Uh, so M.2 slots. So we've got one up here with the X570 Aorus Master branding with the uh, heatsink on there, another one down here, and then a smaller module down here. So yeah, you are going to be able to obviously utilize PCI Express Gen 4 or PCIe 4.0 uh, through these drives as well and get crazy blistering fast speeds. Uh, so the only kind of other major thing on this side of the board that you're going to see is this bit here. So it has got an active fan solution down here. You may remember we did have this on boards many, many years ago. So like Enforce 4 days, the DFI LAN parties, that kind of thing. But we're told these are very, very much improved. So it sits under here. Uh, other cooling on there, you can see that they have stuck with their patented fins array design, which gives them a huge surface area. So instead of just having a block, you can see it's got all these individual fins, which go down here as well and is branded. You can probably see it on the camera as direct touch. And this kind of all amalgamates into the rear IO, which is another area that I want to talk through. So rear IO wise, if I actually uh, try, try and get round to the board here, you can see to start with, we've got a clear CMOS button. We've also got the flash BIOS button. So yes, we have seen these features before on other boards from other manufacturers as well as Gigabyte, but yeah, they've brought it to this board as well. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, we've got plenty of USB ports down here as well as here as well. And a sort of 
I guess one specific for uh, flashing the BIOS down here as well, denoted with the white instead of the blue or the black. We've got USB 3.1 here as well. We've got our dual uh, LAN on here as well, uh, which I believe are both from Intel. Instead of using something like Killer or some other kind of proprietary one, uh, yeah, they're going with Intel there. And then we've got our gold-plated audio connectors and SP diff. So lots and lots of connectivity there for USB. Obviously, internal panel uh, headers and that, lots of flexibility for USB. And if I turn the board around, this is another thing that I kind of want to show you, which is really important uh, for this board, is on the back, you can see that it has this kind of huge heat sink um, covering over the PCB, which is obviously going to help with the dissipation of heat, especially when pushing your components to the limits through the likes of overclocking with that clean, stable power that we've got from the 14 phases. So you can see that, yeah, we've got this nice kind of Aorus branded heatsink um, around the back. And that's pretty much it, guys. You know, there's not really too much else that I can, I can go through without kind of, I guess, delving into the performance side of things. And that involves obviously putting in a third generation processor, uh, Ryzen processor from AMD and at the moment we are restricted and bound by NDA until the 7th So if you are actually watching this preview on the 7th of July There will actually be a review on this board uh, where we will actually be putting in the processor and the memory Building up a, a full kind of test rig uh, setup and you will see all the performance results of this board and many many other boards that we have got in at the moment So there you go guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did you know exactly what to do and uh, Yeah, stay tuned for a lot more content based around this launch as well as obviously the new uh, 5700 series graphics cards as well PCIe Gen 4 third generation Ryzen X570 There's so much at the moment AMD are just killing it. So yeah, see you later guys. Bye. Bye, bye